listen to me like you've never listened to me ever in your life. Several years ago, <clears throat> a particular gospel landed on the southern shores of the United States. You might say that the American church was invaded. Gospel of laughter, of jokes. Gospel of foolishness. I remember seeing this just a few weeks perhaps after this all began. I looked at it and I said to my wife, well, at least it takes absolutely no discernment to see that what this lunacy is. Much to my shock, it swept almost the whole Western world, great corners of the charismatic Pentecostal movement. I remember crying out to God, God, how could it be? How could it be? How could this thing happen to your church? You see, folks, we've forgotten something. Here we are in New York, and the Twin Towers have come down, and the Pentagon has been attacked. And rightfully, we can say the walls are down. And the justice of God is touching a, a nation that has rejected truth. But we forget the judgment begins in the house of God. The arrival of this gospel was the judgment of God on a slumbering church. A church that wanted prosperity and security. They wanted no cross, no word, no repentance, no cutting of the sword, no living water. They wanted to feel good. And so God, you see the Old Testament poured a spirit of drunkenness on what called itself the church of Jesus Christ. It was the judgment of God. It began in the church. And I remember saying to other people, it will not be long. And the judgment will be touching the shores of North America. Because it's begun in the house of God. I knew it when this started. The judgment was at the door. I speak from a heart of passion. I condemn no one. I speak from a heart of passion. Like Elijah did. 
Say, mighty God, you've got to come again. Your people are captured. Your, your people have been taken captive by Baal. Verse 39 says, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. In verse 40, Elijah said to them, take the prophets of Baal and not let not one of them escape. And they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Now I want to explain to you the significance of that. We're obviously not called to physically harm anybody in our generation. That's, if anybody ever makes that suggestion, that is not the church of Jesus Christ. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. But the word escape in the Hebrew means smooth. That's what it means. In other words, he's saying, let them not slip here. They've been exposed. You now know what they are. You've seen the presence of God. Don't let them slip away. Don't let them keep deceiving you with their smoothness anymore. Get away from their altars. Take them to the brook as it is and put an end to their influence over your life. Beloved Church of Jesus Christ, I know tonight I'm speaking not just to Times Square Church, but there'll be churches all over North America. In particular, United States and Canada that are going to hear this message. Beloved church, get away from their altars. Run for your life. The Apostle Paul, let me read it to you. Don't turn. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, what agreement, verse 16, is the temple of God with idols? You are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. When we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. Because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives Him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself because that's what makes God happy. Amen. Let's open our heart to Him today. I am blessed. I am strong. I am talented. I am disciplined. I am focused. I am prosperous. This notion that you have so much goodness in yourself that you can literally speak your desires out and God somehow jumps out of the little genie lamp and gives you everything that you desire because you're such a noble person created to be a winner and a champion is a lie right out of hell. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am attractive. I am getting younger. I am an A student. I am smart. I am full of wisdom. I am a good learner. In the book, Your Best Life Now, Osteen says, God wants this to be the best time of your life. Happy, successful, fulfilled individuals have learned how to live their best life now. As you put the principles found in these pages to work, today you will begin living your best life now. I've been equipped, empowered, anointed by the creator of the universe. I am not lacking, I am not average, I am not inferior, I am equipped, I am empowered, I am anointed, I am wise, I am a masterpiece. Why, why are these people so successful? Be, because Satan is behind the enterprise and he is appealing to that which is the natural desire of the unregenerate heart. Everything the unconverted sinner wants is what these people are offering in the name of Jesus Christ. And I am being renewed in my youth. I am full of health, vitality, wholeness. I am young. I am energetic. I am vibrant. I am radiant. I am fresh. Let God be God in your situation. Mama ghost will flow. Mama ghost will flow. I will be back in the loving arms of a beautiful
probably noticed that we've been seeing mother a lot of times instead of father. The mother heart of God is wrapping around you right now. Verse 17, he says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Touch not the unclean thing. It's not talking about homosexual uh, sexuality and pornography. These are unclean altars. This is a table of devils. And the Holy Ghost says to Paul, touch not the unclean thing. Come out from among them. Run for your life. Because this is about your life. It's not just about an opposing theology or conflicting viewpoint on Jesus. This is about your life. My mind is forever branded with the story that I heard of police officers from the city of New York as, as people were fleeing from a crumbling building. There were police officers and firemen and others that were running towards the building saying, run for your life at their own peril. And in some cases, I believe they knew they were going to die, but there was a sense of duty. I was crying out to God. I said, God, oh, Jesus, don't let my sense of duty be less for your kingdom than these beloved firemen and policemen were for those that are perishing in a falling tower. We're living in a generation when truth is falling into the streets. I want to be among those that are not running away from the conflict, but running into the conflict and saying, run for your life. Church is where the worship leaves you cold. There is no sense of God because they don't know God. Run. Run from churches where you're comfortable in your sins. That's a table of devils. If you come into the house of God and you've got sin in your life and you're not convicted of it, you're at a table of devils. Run from pulpits that are filled with political men who are using the pulpit of God for a personal political agenda. Run! Run from those who preach division between races and cultures. Run! Run! Get out! Turn it off! Get away from it! They know nothing of God. Run! from ungodly spasmodic movements and endless empty prophesying beloved church run for your life run from preachers that stand and tell stories and jokes run like you've never run before run for those that are only after your money and they use one gimmick after another one foolish thing after another to get your money Run. Nothing, nothing happens until you use your faith. Nothing, nothing, nothing. God's not moved by tears. God doesn't respond. It took me a half a century to discover that. And he starts handing me these big chunks of money, stacks of money. And when I got all the money packed in and I was thinking to walk on the plane, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I can get money to you anywhere you are. I can get money to you anywhere you are. Let me tell you, this thousand dollar seed is breaking the shackles. It's breaking the shackles. It's breaking the chains. And to me, a thousand dollar seed is proof that you have conquered greed. What I can walk away from, I have mastered. What I can't walk away from has mastered me. A seed is impotent. Your thousand dollars cannot reproduce until it enters into a covenant with the soil. 
happened after he said it is finished is the veil was rent from top to bottom, signifying that no man could do that. But the price that was paid was there's now no separation. So that we have direct access in the Holy of Holies. We understand, according to Hebrews, that Jesus is our high priest. Absolutely. And he's the first of many brethren, which means I now come into a priestly anointing. So I now can... Say walk, that again, because now, they don't get it. I now come into a priestly anointing. Jesus is not the only begotten on. Son of God. He is not. I'm a Son of he's God. He's the first fruit. If you've, you're the, he's the first fruit. He's the first born of many. Okay. Jesus is not the only begotten on. Son of God. He is not. I'm a Son of he's, God. And, and I want to hit that because poverty is It a is a curse. curse. Absolutely. You know, and, and, I got no problem with a basketball player driving a Rolls Royce. I got no problem with a baseball player flying in an airplane. We expect but why, that. We expect that. Why Come can't on. a child of God have that? Come on. Those thorns are a symbol of debt in Hebrew, of mm -hmm. debt. Right poverty and lack come on and teach. so here they come with jesus teach. they see the symbol of debt poverty and lack they mocking jesus and they take that that curse of poverty and lack press it into the brow of jesus we're cursed by the sweat of adam's brow those thorns pierced the brow of our savior and the curse of poverty has been broken and we're reconnected to jehovah our, our gyra, our provider, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, now this is so vital here, Pastor Lee. I, I can go forever, and we're going to have to take a break and come right back. But that's why it says, He became poor that you might become oh, rich. Gosh. That's why it says, He became poor that you might become oh. rich. Run from gospels that focus only on success and prosperity. Run! Run! From those who use the name of Christ only for personal gain. Run from those that are picking your pocket in the name of Jesus. Run! Run from gospels that only focus on self-improvement. How can I... Three steps to a better personality. Three steps to this and forth. Run! Run from churches where men and not Christ are glorified. Run! Run! Body of Christ, run! Get out! Don't touch the unclean thing! Run! From churches in America and Canada where there is no Bible. There's no cross in the theology. There's no soul-searching word. There's no repentance from sin. There's no mention of the blood of Jesus. Run! It's unclean! Run! Do you ever feel like you need to talk about sin more? You know what, I talk, I just feel like I do it in a different way. I, I get that, you know, that criticism sometimes, but, you know, I'm still one of the old-fashioned ones that give an altar call to every service and on every television broadcast. And, you know, when I talk about it, I talk about, you know, how we can become better, how we can overcome. And I just, um, you know, I, I probably categorize it bigger, and, but, but I don't feel like I'm supposed to go and beat people down. Most people know what they're doing wrong. Well, I would consider myself a leader just because there's a lot of people watching and following me. I think a leader is somebody that, you know, that, that leads others, that people look up to, that, that carries a high standard. And, you know, defining leadership, I guess, would be, doesn't have to do with success, but it's how you carry yourself, your character. This is a word now for you today. Drink waters out of thine own cistern and running waters out of thine own well. God says, listen, look up for a minute. If you will come to me, if you'll come to me in truth, if you'll believe on me, out of your belly are going to flow rivers of living water. I will, I will teach you how to dig your own well. I will open your eyes. I will show you this book. I will lead you into truth. I will guide you with mine eye, he says in the scriptures. Drink waters out of that which I'm going to give you and running waters out of your own well. Thanks be to God. The whole church in the world can backslide. But those that are genuine have a well that has been dug. They're not going to be moved by whatever anybody says. I know what God says. I know who God is. He has given me living water. And I'm not satisfied with the rantings and ravings of fools. I have living water. And there's some people listening to my voice by tape in the future. You've got to get out of where you are. 
You've got to dig a well in your own house, find some friends that are willing to walk with God, start talking to them about the things of Jesus, get together and begin to pray, and God will meet you and give you living water. Verse 16, is, he says, it's not just for you, but let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of water in the streets. God says, I'm not just going to give you to drink. I'm going to give you so much, it's going to overflow you. And it's going to be dispersed everywhere you go. And it's going to flow in the streets. Everywhere you are, you're going to know me. From the least to the greatest, you're going to know me. You're going to know who I am. You're going to know me in power. You're going to know the true fire of God. You're going to know it. With all the men of God that I've known that are wonderful, greatly used men of God, they dug their own well. They got their own water by, by God's grace. They were given water. A spring of water came in. They, they were not trying to spare the rod in their own lives. They said, God, cut me. Cut me deep. And then wash me with your word. And then they laid their life down on the altar and said, use me for your glory. And yes, there's been great personal cost in many of their lives. You know, to leave the altar of Baal, it does cost you. The whole thinking of society in that day was contrary to Elijah. Even the king wanted to kill him. Verse 17 says, let them own, be only thine own and not strangers with thee. The Lord says, the water that I give you, let it be the water I gave you. And let it not be strangers. Let the people who are outside of my heart, let them not be feeding you water. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Rejoice with your first relationship. Rejoice with me, God says. Let me fill you again. Let me touch you again. Let me build your life again. Let me consume what's unlike me again. Let me touch you again and rejoice with that first love. I loved you before you loved me. The Lord says, come back and rejoice with that love. <laughs> I poured up my heart. There's nothing more I could do, Lord. <laughs> Oh God, you have to go after this apostate church, this generation, Lord, of apostate. You've got to go after them, Lord. You've got to set your people free. All I can do is, is warn, but they've got to run. They've got to run. Oh, your word says, draw me and I will run after you. Holy Spirit, I ask you now to draw. Draw like you've never done before draw people who are listening to this message Lord draw them even if they don't agree draw them let them be a witness of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you've got to go go into homes around America now go into homes in Canada as the sound of my voice Lord just travels into these corridors and homes and lives draw Holy Spirit draw I pray God that you draw I pray you turn from sin Lord turn God from the wrong altars of our generation oh Lord and turn your people back again have them say the Lord is God the Lord is God Lord, I ask that your fire, your true fire, your holy fire, Lord, would come and touch hearts, come and touch lives, beginning in this house, Lord. And, and you said, let your fountain be dispersed abroad. Let it be in the streets. I ask, oh God, that be true for this message today. <laughs> We repent, we repent, Lord, of our longings for prosperity and our longings for comfort. We repent, Lord, of our longings for a life of ease and our, our desire to put away the cross and put away the blood and put away the word and put away repentance. We repent. <laughs> we've sinned against you, God, as a church age. We've sinned against you, Lord. <laughs> We see the judgment on the nation and we've been blind to the judgment in your house. Oh, 